My name is Dave Wilhelm. I am a professor at Wake Technical Community College in Raleigh, North Carolina. I teach business management and entrepreneurship courses primarily. I also teach seated classes and online classes. This video is one in a series to try and bring the same or equivalent information to my online students as is received by my seated students. This particular topic is break-even analysis. How much do we have to make and sell so we may not make a profit, but at least we're not losing money. We'll talk just a bit about costs and a bit about profit. There's a previous video on profit if you don't know much about that or you'd like a brief review, you can see the profit video. Then we'll get into break even, some small exercises. Then a big exercise, a bag manufacturing example. And finally, a bit of mention about some extensions to the basic break-even analysis. Three types of costs. Startup costs, those one-time costs that you have to uh, do so you can go into business. You might have to buy some equipment, do some registration with government organizations, hire some people, make business cards, set up a website. All those little things that you have to do once, but after that, they're done. Fixed costs are those costs that are going to recur every week, month, year. Nothing, of course, is absolutely fixed. This is a business presentation, not an accounting presentation or an economics presentation. I'm not trying to please those folks. I'm just trying to get some basic business information across. And variable costs. Those are the ones that are going to vary with the product things, with the material that goes into the product, the labor that goes into the product, perhaps direct selling expenses. So here's profit again. Profit is equal to the quantity made and sold times the margin, how much we make on each one, minus those fixed costs. So that's our profit. Three basic assumptions. One is that we're just dealing with a single product. OK, it's unrealistic, but we'll extend that a bit later. Another assumption is that you sell all you make. There is no zero inventory. Uh, I can just picture accounting people shuddering at that. But this is business, not accounting. And finally, the initial break even ignores startup costs, but we will also include those later on. It's really that even. The break even quantity, quantity Q sub B E, quantity break even, is equal to the fixed cost divided by the margin. And of course, the margin is how much we make on each one. So it's saying basically, how many times do we have to make a profit, the margin, to cover those fixed costs? And it's actually kind of intuitive that it's just fixed costs divided by the margin. The revenue, that's easy. Once you know the break-even quantity, the break-even revenue, revenue sub BE, is just the break-even quantity times the selling price. If you're a math geek, I'm a math geek, um, to derive the break-even equation, start with profit. Profit equals Q times M minus FC. If you set that profit equal to zero, now we've got the break even quantity times the margin minus the fixed cost. Take fixed cost over to the other side or add fixed cost to both sides, depending on whether you went to a public or a private school and when. 
then simply divide both sides by the margin and quantity break even is equal to the fixed cost divided by the margin. First exercise, and by the way, you can just keep watching the video or you can pause and try the problem and then restart it and see the solution. So in this case, determine the monthly break-even quantity and revenue when the margin is $7.50 per unit, the variable cost is $12.00 and the monthly fixed costs are $3,200. And the answer is, there is that equation, quantity break even equals fixed cost divided by margin, which in this case is $3,200 divided by $7.50, or 427 units that have to be made and sold to break even. Notice we did not need the variable cost for that. All we needed was the margin. However, we do need the variable cost and the margin to determine the selling price in order to calculate the break even revenue. Selling price 12 plus 750 or $19.50 to get the revenue, multiply the break-even quantity by the selling price, 427 times 1950, or $8,326.50. Though there may have been some rounding up there. Another one, determine the monthly break-even quantity and revenue when the selling price is $19, the variable cost is $8.50, and the monthly fixed costs are $2,200. Pause it and calculate, or just watch. So the margin is the selling price minus the variable cost, 19 minus 8.50, $10.50 margin, earnings, or unit profit, whatever, however you like to refer to it. Quantity is the fixed cost of $2,200 divided by the $10.50 margin, or 210 items to be made and sold, no inventory. Break-even revenue, break-even quantity, times selling price, 210 times $19, or $3,990. Quick solution check. Quantity break even is 210. The profit, quantity, <laughs> times margin minus the fixed cost, 210 times 1050, that's the margin, minus the $2,200 fixed cost. So the profit is 2,205 minus 2,200. Little rounding um, dis discrepancy there. And that's about zero. So, yep, it, it actually works. Good, good idea to check every so often. Okay, the startup costs, those, those one-time costs, buying the equipment, um, getting business cards, setting up a website, hiring people. You can just ignore them. Uh, particularly if they're not that large and you were able to afford it out of your pocket, fine. Just get on with life. You can do a payback analysis, which basically looks at the initial cost, how much revenue you're going to derive from that initial cost, and looks how long it will take. Payback's kind of a topic all in itself, so we won't dwell on it. You can either 
cover those startup costs by paying cash or by borrowing the money. Either way, what we're going to want to do is spread those costs out for some period of time. So if it's a cash investment, one might say we'll recover those costs in one year, two years, whatever you're comfortable with. It's a business decision. Um, it is a cost that's already occurred, so in some extent it's a paper exercise, but it, it might be good to know. So if it's cash, determine how long you want to spread it out for, allocate that on a monthly basis, and we'll get to that, and it does ignore the time cost of money. If you borrow the money for a period of two or three years, and you're going to be paying back interest from interest plus principal, it really makes sense just to whatever the duration of that loan, uh, allocate those monthly payments to a fixed cost for the period of time of the loan. So break even with startup costs, it's a fixed cost, which is closer to a fixed cost than anything. It'll be fixed for a while, then it'll go away. So quantity break even, fixed cost, just add the startup cost per month, that allocation, and then divide the sum by the margin. So it's really not that much different. Here is an example. Determine initial and long term monthly break-even quantity and revenue. Each item costs $5.50 to make. You sell them for $13. You have monthly fixed costs of $4,600 forever. Startup costs were $11,500. And for no apparent reason, or perhaps a good reason, you plan to allocate those startup costs for a period of two years or 24 months. So the margin, 13 minus 550, $7.50. The break even quantity, those fixed costs divided by the margin comes out to 613. Check the revenue, 613 times the selling price, not the margin careful about that. 613 times $13 is $7,969 break-even revenue. That was long-term, uh, specifically after the startup cost uh, allocation period. The short-term, we said two years or 24 months to recover that $11,500, and that's about $497 above. Calculating the quantity break even, $4,600, long term fixed cost, plus $497, that's going to be there for two years, divided by the margin, and this comes out to $680. Break even revenue. 680 times $13 or $8,840, which is a little bit more than $79.69. In fact, it's where is it? In fact, it's $497 more because that's what the additional um, expense that has to be made up for the first two years. Okay, here is your big problem that includes startup costs. You might want to pause the video and go over these, but I will um, talk through them fairly quickly. A lawyer to structure the business, register an internet domain name, thread to sew bags, labels for bags, monthly trips to a craft fair, fabric for the bag lining, 
wages for the owner, hotel and monthly craft conferences, subscription to monthly magazine, business insurance, bank checking account fees, business cards, handles for bags, an industrial sewing machine, website posting, a lawyer retainer fee, an office phone, cell phone, and internet access. So which of these are the startup costs, which are the fixed costs, and which are the variable costs? As you're looking at these, the ones that tend to be per month are fixed costs. The ones that are per bag are variable costs, and the ones that occur just one time are the startup costs. So you can pause the video and think about this. Meanwhile, I'm going on. So here are the startup costs. A lawyer to structure the business, that should be a one time. Register an internet domain name. 500 business cards, those ought to last for a while. And an industrial sewing machine. Do those one time and, and you're good for at least a while. Fixed costs, okay. Travel to that craft fair every month. The owner wants to pull $1,400 a month out. The monthly hotel at the conference. The monthly magazine subscription. Business insurance. Bank checking account fees. Website hosting, which is different. It only, we only had to register the, do the domain once, but now we have those monthly fees. A lawyer retainer fee the office phone, the cell phone, and the internet access. All those are recurring fixed costs. Variable costs, well, thread to sew the bag, labels for the bags, fabric for the bag, and handles for the bags. Uh, so those are the startup, fixed, and variable costs. You are certainly welcome to do the calculations, but for your convenience, the startup costs are $2,676. Monthly fixed are $1,794. And the variable costs are $15.20. So how do we calculate the break-even quantity and how do we calculate the startup cost per month allocation? Well, we got to pick a selling price. How are we going to do that? Um, there are at least two ways to price something. One is cost plus, and the other way is what the market will bear. If we've been doing this sort of business for years, we probably have a pretty good idea, so pick a price. This is a brand new product, or we're brand new in the market. We might want to do a little market research to find out what people are willing to pay for this and how many people, what proportion of people are willing to pay that. And that will be getting at the selling price. And later on, uh, that same information will help us determine if the break-even quantity is something we can attain. So what the heck, $24.95, uh, feel like uh, one of those infomercials. Uh, how much per month uh, startup cost? Well, how long would we like to get stuck paying for it? And I arbitrarily picked 18 months. And these are things that can you can go back and adjust in order to check on what's reasonable, what you can do, and what you can't do. So long-term solution, the margin is 975, the 
break-even quantity, those fixed costs, 1794, divided by the margin, 184 is our break-even quantity. Break-even revenue, $4,590. Is that a reasonable number? Okay, go back and check that market research, how much people are willing to pay and how many of them are willing to pay that. Short term, where we have to make up for the startup costs, it's $149 a month that we're going to allocate the starting costs, 2676 divided by 18, just add the startup cost per month in, so it's 1794 plus $149 divided by $9.75. And now the break-even quantity short term for 18 months comes out to 199 items. I've got a sanity check in here. So let's check. The startup cost per month divided by the margin is $149 divided by $975. And that comes out to 15 items. And let's see. Without the startup cost, it was $184. With the startup cost, it's $199. And that's 15. So yes, we didn't make any arithmetic errors. Um, between the long-term and short-term solutions. The revenue, 199 times 24.95 is $4,965. The difference, 49.65 minus 45.90 divided by, not the margin as in this case, but by the selling price, but that comes out to 15 also. So we got it right. Of course, the next step is, can I sell those 199 for 18 months? And can I sell 184 per month after that? It depends on what your market research tells you. This is a go, no go. A few extensions. We have looked at startup costs. You can allocate them uh, however you want. The owner's draw. Uh, unless you have an independent source of income, most owners would like to be making some money out of this, uh, their effort. You can take it as salary as our bank uh, break even example did. Or you can take it as a commission. You take it as a salary, you add it on to the fixed cost. You want to take it as a commission, so much per each one you sell, then it's going to factor into that margin. Instead of margin being selling price minus variable cost, it'll be selling price minus variable cost minus some amount that the owner is going to pull out for each one they sell. Remember, one of the assumptions was one product. Well, how many companies do you know that just have one company, one product? And at the very least, they have more than one size or color. Uh, if they have the same markup, it reverts back to the basic fixed cost divided by margin. It doesn't matter what the product is, if they all have the same margin, we can still use a simple little equation. If they have the same percent markup, then you can do something with selling price and take a guess at what proportion you're selling or will be selling. And the arithmetic is a little messier, but it can still be done. If one has a number of products and the margins are arbitrary, some are on a percentage basis, some are on a dollar amount markup. Uh, basically, that's why we have Excel spreadsheets. So we can do all sorts of scenario analysis in Excel spreadsheets. And this uh, simple formula goes out the window. 
that was break-even analysis. I hope it helped. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to send me an email. My name is Dave Wilhelm, Wake Technical Community College, Raleigh, North Carolina.